First, I just want to say thank you to the Intersource Commons community. This was my very first um, community that I joined when I got involved in open source. And it's always just been one of the best communities. And that's just due to lots of folks like you all. Um, today, we're going to be talking about empathetic engineering through inner source. I think it's really important that we start thinking about our development to foster compassionate, inclusive, and collaborative technologies. The world as we know it is changing significantly, and I think that we, especially in the landscape of technology, and I know that we're driving very hard towards the bottom line and the business side of house, but sometimes we can get a little lost in the sauce, so to speak, when we're actually doing our development and planning. So just a little bit for myself, right? I, as mentioned, the Intersource Commons, I'm a member of Intersource Commons community. This was my first community. If you're new to this group, I definitely, it's it's a wonderful place to be and I'm super happy that you're here. So with that being said, we're just gonna get started. I want to chat a little bit about Fannie Mae. So for myself, I am the open source strategist at Fannie Mae. And so what does that so what does Fannie Mae do, right? We're not the student loan company. I know that that gets a little bit it, it, it happens. Sometimes we get a little bit confused with the student loan company, but we're not. We're the we provide liquidity and into the mortgage market. We don't actually originate these loans. We lend money directly to the or lend money directly to the borrowers. Instead, what we do is we purchase the loans by the lenders, and then we make sure that we back your bank, right? And that's really important. So, well, what does this really mean in the concept of empathy, right? So, well, we're looking at the human experience, owning your home, um, being able to rent a home, being able to have a place to live is, is so such a blessing and so important. But behind that, there's a lot of data and there's a lot of development. And, you know, we, we have to start looking at it from the human side of things. So realistically, what are we going to learn today? You know, why are, why are you here? <laughs> so we really want to explore how these inner source principles can be leveraged to enhance empathetic engineering practices. We really want to create technology that is user-centered, ethical, and inclusive. Um, some of the key goals is we're really going to dig deep into empathetic engineering and how it addresses the user needs, emotions, and experience. And then through our inner source principles, we're going to explain how these open source kind of collaboration ideas, when applied within organizations, promote transparency, inclusivity, and innovation. We want to provide actionable strategies as well and practical steps for applying inner source in our daily engineering workflows and daily practices. And what is one of the biggest things that we all need to do right now? We have to engage with leadership. Leadership defines the, the overall strategy of what we're doing. And so we have to engage with them to help them understand why these types of practices are important. So what is empathetic engineering? Um, you know, Kelsey Hightower, he is a wonderful open source maintainer, super powerhouse. I learned a lot about empathetic engineering from this person. You know, essentially, we need to have a growing need for ethical user focused technology. We are living in the world of AI and we need to start thinking about ethical user focused technology. We have to think of our end users needs, emotions and experiences. And, you know, Technology built with empathy benefits users to foster stronger user relationships. So empathetic engineering in action, right? How could intersource impact thoughtful development, right? So we, we think about assistive technologies. When you're working in assistive technologies, you're thinking rapid innovation and accessibility features. For example, some of you may be working in websites that need to have accessible features for people that uh, have different needs. So Apple and Microsoft do a really nice job of this. Human-centered healthcare, right? Collaborative engineering that helps build tools that consider both the physical and emotional needs of the human being. Social good initiatives, you know, Google has a, quite a few social good initiatives. We also, you know, GitHub has a wonderful sponsorship for our maintainers. Like these are social good initiatives that are take, thinking about the people and tackling global cha challenges to improve um, connectivity. But we're going to talk about this a little bit later and go back and see how these all apply. 
So now inner source, right? As I, as mentioned here, this is, I think, the coolest way to develop, right? We have our core principles of inner source, you know, openness, transparency, mentorship, volunteerism, you know, inner source, as we know, applies the practice of the open source methodologies in your collaboration to, or in your organization to enhance collaboration. And, you know, we have our openness principle. We want to ensure that projects are easily discoverable and well-documented. When you are an end user of a particular product, you would like to see what is kind of happening there and how it impacts you, right? You know, we have transparency. We want to maintain clear communication um, about projects, directions, requirements, decision making, and so that we all have a shared understanding of these particular spaces. You know, mentorship. Mentorship so important. How teams actively mentor contributors from other teams and facilitating that knowledge transfer. And then of course we know our volunteerism is so important. That's just with your voluntary code contributions with the contributors goals. So as we know, if we apply these principles super well with inside of our organization, we can kind of start to break down silos, promote code reuse and cultivate that culture of continuous improvement. So how do we drive empathy within these core practices? So let's talk about three principles for connection, right? We have, um, let's see if make, yeah, so we have our three core principles for connection, you know, realistically we have collaboration. So how does InnerSource enhance that with collaboration? Cross team collaboration in turn broadens perspectives and enriches the understanding of the diverse user needs. So we all are working as one, but we all need to work together and share our ideas and our thoughts because we all come from different walks of life and we all have different experiences. Regardless, if we're still creating the same binary code, we still are a human being and we still understand what others could possibly mean. So now when we get to transparency, you know, openly sharing processes and outcomes fosters empathy because it allows our engineers and our technologists to see other users impact because now we're thinking from a collaborative perspective. Now we're being transparent. We're hearing one another and we're seeing how each of our work does impact the end goal. And then of course, you know, inclusivity. Encouraging participation from diverse backgrounds ensures solutions reflect that wide range of the user experiences. So it's super important that <clears throat> we really take a moment, pause, reflect, develop. And one of the things that you can always do is consistently drive back to this, right? These should be your North Stars when you're doing that development. So inner source in practice, right, it, it's, it's really important because now we're thinking with an empathetic mind, but we're always driving back to the inner source core principles. So the importance of inner source driven empathetic engineering. So we talk about user satisfaction. You know, now we're going back, right? We're going back. So user satisfaction, the continuous feedback loops help teams understand and meet real users' needs. Innovation through collaboration. Empathy-driven insights emerge as teams share ideas and refine them collectively. Equity and accessibility. Diverse teams and perspectives promote inclusive and accessible solutions. And then, of course, hang on with my little bullet. Okay, good. Okay, ethical responsibility. Transparency encourages team members to consider the ethical implications when working openly. So now how do we apply empathetic in through engineering through inner source, right? So some of the things I'm going to take you through part one and part two. I know I don't have that much time left, but I'm going to try to get through it. So active listening through collaborative platforms. Use collaborative tools like your shared repositories, your internal chat forums, Slack, Teams, anything else that we have to gather and review feedback in real time. You know, these platforms, they, they enable engineers to listen to users directly and understand their unique challenges and experiences. You know, benefits, you know, active listening through open channels fosters empathy and allows engineers to immediately identify the developer 
and consumer pain points. And it leads to more relevant solutions. You know, building diverse engineering teams. Engineering teams, as, as I've mentioned before, and I always hit home, we have to remember that we are all independent individual humans. And we need to have a diverse team to bring that broader range of perspectives and insights to the de design process. We want to reduce the risk of bias to help address the needs of different user groups. And, and we ensure from a diverse perspective that technology is accessible, it's inclusive and respectful of various culture and individual experiences. We fostering that open knowledge sharing and we encourage that through tooling. So by, by a culture of shared learning and active listening, teams are better equipped to empathize with users accessing a wealth of experiences with their prior experience. And so part two, how, how can we do this, right? You know, as we're, as we're going through this mindset, you know, we're going to be creating user personas, develop user personas as a team to represent different user groups, capturing both practical and emotional needs. We've already done our active listening sessions. We've already collected feedback. So now let's create our personas. You know, we're understanding challenges that folks are facing and, and it, it's, it's very beneficial. So, you know, also to always continuous feedback loops. I know that when we break and we talk a little bit more, we're going to find that the very common thread is there's not a lot of continuous feedback that happens um, all of the time, whether it being, you know, demands of the business, demands of your deadlines. We have to just kind of go back to it. Sometimes I do believe that it's okay to slow down and to think. And in our current climate, it's a little bit tricky to do that, but I think we should start factoring that into the development process. And then open discussion of ethical considerations. I think that that is very, very, very important. We want to have transparent discussions around the implications and design of the development choices, right? Especially when we're using AI, how are we developing things ethically, fair, and diverse. So this practice of ethical considerations helps ensure that technology development respects user rights. One of the big things is mitigating risk and aligning with the social values when fostering approach for innovation. So in our sources of foundation, so as we've gone back, it all goes back to that continuous loop of inner source shared ownership, feedback, collaboration, transparency. We we want to continue this trend and movement. We want to ensure that all team members have visibility into the engineering process from the initial ideation to feedback integration. This all sounds like something that's very nice to have, but this is actually very core to your business. This is very core to your business team and your business unit, because when you're taking all of these perspectives, all of these different hands on the projects, you're ensuring that A, your project is stable and secure. You're ensuring that your project is meeting the customer's needs. You're not just dumping code out there to get things out there. If anything, taking a moment and working in this empathetic mindset, leveraging inner source core principles is going to come out a better product. And so with that, let's engage leadership. You know, I've I, I walked through some pretty standard concepts. Well, how do we engage leadership with that? We have to present the business value, as I mentioned earlier, or just now about the stable project and the satisfaction of your customer. We highlight, we can highlight how the empathetic engineering drives that user satisfaction, increases loyalty, and also what it does is it reduces costly designs by meeting those needs. We can showcase successful case studies where we can other companies, as in this forum, we can share case studies on how this worked and share that this can happen. And I think that that's really important that we share. Um, you know, we have to align with the strategic goals. Every year you have your OKRs, your KPIs. We have to start thinking in that way that aligns back to those goals. We do have a lot of things that are nice to have, but we need to continue to align back to the business. And we have to, have to, have to get stakeholders. We need to encourage active participation. Invite them, invite your leadership to attend collaborative inner source sessions. Invite them to come to inner source commons for a community call. Um, show them the feedback of that. I'm wrapping up. <laughs> show them the feedback that you got in real time. Promote that collaborative culture and, and you will win. 
So finally, as we wrap up here, you know, InnerSource is one of the most powerful frameworks for core development. Embrace these InnerSource principles to create that user-centric landscape and integrate InnerSource and empathetic engineering. And so with that, I just want to thank you. Any questions?